A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Eastern News Update for Tuesday, September 14. The Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations is challenging the island's parliamentarians to speak out against what it says is massive exploitation of poor people in Barbados by financial institutions. Speaking at a press conference today, General Secretary Dennis DePisa called on policymakers to stand up for the working class people of Barbados feeling the pinch of high bank charges. I think it is wrong, fundamentally wrong, in Barbados, in this age, to tell a, a person that the minimum amount you can draw out from an ATM is $50, and you are forced to go to the ATM because it over the counter transactions are not being encouraged. This is, to my mind, what I call a wicked type of approach that needs to be addressed. And this is why I call exploitation at the highest level. And I would hope that our parliamentarians. Our government will be there. Our senators will stand up and speak to matters like this forcefully because this is unacceptable. We want the, the, the private sector, yes, wants our business community, want, they all want to make money. But you mean you're going to do it at the full exploitation of the masses? The C2 sub official also used the occasion to weigh in on a spike of COVID 19 cases on the island. The PISA, who expressed concern about the situation, however, maintains there is no need for mandatory vaccination, but he is urging unvaccinated Barbadians to educate themselves and get the job. I think that you all are well aware of the Labour's position. We are not supportive of any mandatory um, immunisation, but we recognise that we are at a point in, in, uh, in a place that we have to think rationally and we have to understand that in the interest of ourselves and of the nation that we got to act responsibly. And this Congress therefore wishes to make an appeal to all Barbadians. Simply, we all want to live. No one wants to die. We all want to see our country continue to go back to a state of normalcy. We all have a decision to make and therefore I think that we should give due consideration. Consideration to be immunized is all that we ask. We're not going to tell anyone to do so, but recognize that there, the options are simple. In other news this Tuesday, the Democratic Labour Party knocks the government for silencing independent voices at the expense of the public purse. Party President Verla de Pisa leveled the criticism as she questioned the appointment of former journalist David Ellis as the COVID-19 public advisor. What is the overall cost of silence? Millions of dollars of taxpayers' money at a time of significant economic and social hardship. What does it mean when an advisor is appointed by the Prime Minister to report to the people? How does that advance the fight against COVID? Why is Prime Minister Motley not channeling those funds towards various civic groups on the ground who can enhance the efforts of the COVID unit in communities. Barbados is again at a critical stage in our fight against this awful pandemic and I urge all Barbadians to wear your masks, wash and sanitize your hands, physically distance, keep away from discretionary social gatherings and get vaccinated. The DLP president also sought to make it clear that her party was not consulted on the creation of the new post and she called for the Motley-led administration to take full responsibility for its actions. In response to a comment made during the press briefing, let me make it clear here that the Democratic Labour Party was never consulted on this recent decision to hire Mr Ellis. We are never consulted on any matters relating to the administration of this country. This government would wish to give that impression and it is time the air is cleared. Our party attends social partnership meetings when invited, just as all other groups do. But more often than not, the issues have already been decided upon. We have noted a trend of the Prime Minister to call upon the name of the Democratic Labour Party whenever questionable decisions of which we have had no part are lambasted. It has to stop. 
Meanwhile, the Barbados Today team took to the streets today to gauge the pulse of the public on the appointment of Ellis to the position of COVID-19 public advisor and government's handling of the pandemic thus far. This is The People's Say. I think the, the thing with David Ellis, whether I agree with it or not, it's a boss move. Um, because he appears to be a non-partisan, his voice is out there for most of Barbados know David Ellis. Most of Barbados respect David Ellis. Most of Barbados would follow what David Ellis says. So I think, um, I wouldn't say it's a party move, it's just a boss move by, you know, a thinking lady. Well, I mean, I can't really weigh in too heavily on this in the political side. I'm not really, you know, but I think based on the little I know of what he has done, done so far, I think it's a good move because the flow of information is crucial. And um, to have appointed him here once he's had done a good job so far and will continue, I think it's a good move. We can't continue like this all the time. Any measures to help with the situation must be supported. For example, Vaccination is an additional layer of protection to our problems, but we are still doing other things. I see that latest appointment as an additional way of getting this message across to people because time is not on our side. Cayman Islands is showing us how to do it. They got 75% of the people vaccinated and little uh, uh, ease in measures. Why can't we get there too? To the latest COVID-19 figures, 735 people are in isolation and there are 69 new positive cases. These were recorded from the 1,771 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory on Monday. 16 persons who are under the age of 18 and the other 53 are 18 years and older. Barbados has recorded 6,053 confirmed cases of the viral illness since March 2020. 52 lives have been lost to COVID-19. A total of 121,643 first doses have been administered under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19. To date, 96,507 persons, or 35.6% of the population, have received their second doses and are fully vaccinated. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news now, operations at several family island airports in the Bahamas were severely impacted after staff withdrew their labor amid industrial issues. More on this report from our news, Bahamas. Aviation Director Algernon Cargill is slamming illegal strike action after staff at the airports on Bimini, Cal Island and Abaco didn't show up to work today. Cargill says he was surprised by the move, which he found out about from a voice note that went viral. I was not aware that there was a labor issue, but certainly if we have all the staff at several airports um, adhering to a request of a shop steward not to come to work and the intent is to close the airports for the next two days, it only could be a labor issue, so I call it what it is. He said domestic flights were the only flights impacted this morning, adding that workers were sent to those islands to assist with operations. Over on Abaco, we understand fewer than 10 employees reported to work at the Leonard M. Thompson International Airport. That's where we met this tourist who showed up to catch a flight back to Florida. Uh, we're waiting to get back to Florida. We arrived and found out that the Prime Minister is coming and all of these securities on strike, so they're not getting paid enough, and so they decided to screw everything up for everybody. On the international front, Russia fined Facebook and Twitter for failing to delete content that Moscow deemed illegal. The move is part of a wider crackdown on big tech. More on this report from Reuters TV. 
A Russian court on Tuesday said it had fined US social media giants Facebook and Twitter for failing to delete content that Moscow deems illegal. The move forms part of a wider crackdown on the sector. Moscow wants foreign big tech firms to open full-fledged offices in Russia and to store Russians' personal data on its territory. The government also published plans on Tuesday to impose new taxes on foreign-owned digital services as part of a push to support its domestic tech sector. The court said Facebook had been handed five fines, totaling 21 million rubles, or almost $288,000. Twitter received two fines, while popular messaging app Telegram was also penalised. Facebook, Twitter and Telegram did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Twitter has been subject of a punitive slowdown since March. Russia says Twitter and other social media firms have not deleted posts featuring banned material quickly enough. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.